Hey everyone, I'm Jen Garrett and welcome to the Move the Ball podcast. On this podcast, we are going to talk about how to succeed in business and in life by putting winning strategies into practice to help you advance faster. So if you're looking to move forward and reach that next level of greatness, then you are in the right place. Now get ready. Let's suit up, show up and move the ball. Hey everyone, Jen Garrett here. It's so great to be back with you on another episode of Move the Ball. This episode is part of my special Path to the Draft series, where I am having conversations with NFL draft prospects on their path to the draft. So today, inside the huddle with us and ready to share his story and talk about his path to the draft is Kylan Johnson. Kylan is a defensive linebacker who started off his college football career at the University of Florida, and he was there from 2015 to 2018. As a Gator, he posted a total of 83 tackles, five and a half TFLs, tackle for loss yards, and one sack. Kylan then played this last year at the University of Pittsburgh, where he made an immediate impact and totaled 54 stops, 10 and a half TFLs, six and a half sacks, and two forced fumbles. Kylan finished second on the team in TFLs and third in sacks. Kylan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jennifer. Glad to be here and ready to share. Well, I appreciate you being here with me today. So let's start off by telling us, how did you get into football? What was your path? So I always grew up, my dad, he always had it on like on Sundays, you know, of course it was always NFL football and growing up, like I just, I love the energy. I love the excitement of, of, about the game. I was into it. Like I just knew it was like some type of connection because I always thought about it. And when I got to 10 years old, 10, 11 years old, it was a mini league team that was like played in a park like five minutes away from my house uh, called the Pleasant Grove Hurricanes. And they put poster, posters up around the neighborhood. You know, after seeing that, I told my dad I wanted to play. And he says, whatever you want to you want to do. So we went up there for tryouts one day and they asked me what position I wanted to play. And it was kind of like, you know, young, you don't know what, what you want to do yet because it's early. So I just said quarterback. So I tried out for quarterback because I could throw the ball really well. And ever since then, I played from from like 10 to 12 and then up in middle school where I continued to play. And ever since then, I've been playing ball. Great. And what excites you about the game? Um, Just like being able to like be violent and, and not get in trouble about it. Like nobody's going to tell you not to be too vicious or – you know, don't don't go so hard. And it just allow you to take a lot of like anger and, you know, pressure that you may be going through or having at the time. So it just allows you to, you know, play hard and nobody nobody's going to stop you at all. And that's what I like about the game. So you mentioned playing quarterback and I know you played quarterback in high school. So how is that different playing defensive linebacker versus quarterback? Growing up, I've always been a really good athlete. So just being able to throw was just, a, I guess, a plus. But I feel like I could have, I could have played any position, just depending on my weight. Of course, I have something to do with certain positions. But just being an athlete just allowed me to to play any position. And so you played at two colleges, right, Florida and Pitt. Tell us about some of the similarities between the two football programs, as well as some of the differences in terms of culture and and how your routines were at those schools. Between the two schools, I feel like it really wasn't a, a difference, like, as far as talent-wise. It was just different as far as, like, I guess, the logo, like being a Florida Gator and then being a Pittsburgh Panther. It was really crazy playing for the Gators. Being in a swamp with 90,000 fans, the games were wild and crazy. Like, I just – I love the atmosphere. While at Pittsburgh, it was the same playing in, in Hinesfield um, where the Steelers played. I mean, it was the same, but it was a you know – a lot of people, but it was two really, really good programs. And I'm glad I was able to represent both of those. And you were all SEC academic team at Florida. And so how did you maintain that balance? Because being a student athlete is tough, right? And academically excelling as well. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work. So what things did you do to ensure your success, both academically as well as on the field? Um, so, yeah, I am kind of good at like, like breaking the two up. So when it's football, when when we have football practice and stuff, like I may take time like before to study and work on a lot of football stuff. And at UF, like academics was after football. So I could break it up between the day, like in the day. So and as far as Pittsburgh, it was opposite. 
we did classes in the morning and football was after. So I did all my academics early in the morning, got that out the way. And then football, I got to do it later in the day. Great. And is there someone that you played with that really helped push you to be a better athlete on the field as well as a better person off the field? Um, yeah, so I got a, um, you know, like a best bud, Rayshad Jackson. And he's just a player who was humble like like I was. Like, we both went through the same type of issues, like, you know, being at Florida. And he was my roommate as well. And we always pushed each other, no matter if it was in a weight room, on a field. Like, that was just someone I could relate to. Like, his family welcomes me. Um, my family does the same for him. And I just felt like that's that's a brother to me. And that's somebody who, I, who was always there for me and vice versa. So, yeah, it was definitely Rayshad. And what lessons have you learned from playing college football that have really helped you to grow as a person that, and that you feel will continue to ensure your success playing in the NFL as well as being su- successful beyond the game? Uh, you're going to face a lot of adversity. You just got to stay focused and don't pay attention to all the outside things. Um, continue to work on your own. Like, just worry about yourself and the team. You know, everything you want to do, want to involve the team. Like, I'm a team first player. Whatever the coaches want me to do, I do it for the team. And I know that's some things I'm going to face when dealing with the NFL. Like, whatever they want me to do, I'm able to do it. I'll do it no matter what. And, you know, just just be a team first player. And that's something that I'm going to continue to be as, as long as I play football. And share with us, what was your most memorable game and why? I enjoyed all the games I played in, no matter if it was a good game or a bad game, um, big win or loss. Like, I just enjoy every game. But i got to say the best game I played in was probably 2017, Florida versus LSU. Um, we played there, and it was, it was wild. It was crazy. It was my first time playing there in Baton Rouge. And I had a big, big game. I recorded a sack, a fumble recovery on the goal line. And that was just one of my better, better games that I had in my career. And it was versus a big team, you know, known team. And that's honestly was probably one of the most exciting games I've been a part of. And that's why it was my favorite. So definitely LSU versus Florida 2017. It's a fun uh, SEC game. I'm an Alabama alum, so I love watching SEC Game. So tell us, how do you bounce back after a loss? I try to pay attention to the mistakes, what I could do better for the team. Then I give my, you know, my position group, which is the linebackers. And we just talk about all the things that we could correct in our room. And then we usually take it to like defensive meetings, like the unit meetings. And we just talk as a team of what we can do better, what we got to fix. And I just try to not think about it. If we going over the film of what we of how we played and like I look at my mistakes and just know that I can't make them no more. If I want to win, I got to do, you know, whatever I got to do to make sure we win in this game. And, you know, just take a deep breath and try to, you know, forget about it so I can move on for the next week or so. So So now what I want to do is just a couple of fun questions to end the show. So first one is what's your favorite food? My favorite food by far is fried chicken. This might not be the greatest time to eat that right now with all the training, but growing up, it was always fried chicken, and I try to sneak, you know, a couple pieces whenever I can, but not too much right now because I was training, but definitely fried chicken. Okay, great. How about what's your favorite football movie? This is not really a movie, but it's a Netflix show, um, All American. You know, just, just being able to relate and some of the problems that they're going through as, you know, high school athletes. And, you know, going back into my time when I was in high school, just thinking about all the things that was going on in life and how you had to separate that from football and just learn to stay focused. So that's a show that I'm, you know, watching right now that I really enjoy. Gotcha. I see the commercials for it. I haven't checked it out yet, but uh, maybe I'll have to, to yeah, check it out. Yeah, do. It's a great show. How about what's your favorite sports team? It doesn't have to be a football team. Well, I only got one favorite sports team. That's the Dallas Cowboys. You know, it's been a lot of emotions um, in my house growing up. You know, Sundays after a loss and a win with the Cowboys. It's just been up and down for them. But that's still my team. I'm a rock out for them. Most of my family is Dallas Cowboys fans. So that's my favorite team. And I'm going to stick with them through everything. And if you could be any superhero, who would you be and why? Superhero. I'll probably be the Hulk. Um, I think the Hulk... You know, big, you know, somewhat kind of fast, can jump with his abilities and stuff. I think that's a huge advantage.
to have. Great. So now tell people, how can they follow you on your journey? What's the best way? What social channel are you on most and where can people kind of see what you're up to? So Twitter, Instagram, um, my social media handles are Colin Johnson 28 and those both are the same. And you can follow me. You know, I post things. I retweet a lot of stuff on Twitter, positive things. I post a lot of positive stuff on Instagram. And soon here, I'll be posting about, you know, what I'm doing to give back to the community because I go work out at a park, two fields that a lot of kids get around. And they just be so interested in, you know, my drills and what I be doing. And they just want to join sometimes. And, you know, I don't, I don't mind, like, having the kids join me because, I mean, it's all fun and games. Uh, I remember someone's parents, one of the kids' parents the other day was like, this is probably the best PE class he has because although I get my work in, I also spend time, you know, just just teaching them, you know, just basic fundamentals about football because they don't know about them yet. So just getting them a head start and, you know, just, just being in their lives and not asking for anything is just something that I want to do. And I'm going to start posting that so everybody can see it. So, yeah, you can definitely reach out or follow me on Twitter or Instagram, Kyle and Johnson 28 Both of those are the same. And, yeah, you can just see, you know, what I'm going through right now. Well, great. And we'll be sure to put those in the show notes so people can follow you on your journey. And I love what you're doing with the kids and making a positive impact. So, Kylan, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure and I wish you much success in the draft and in this new chapter. And thanks to everyone for listening to today's episode and we will catch you next time. Until then, make sure that you suit up, you show up and you move the ball. Thank you for listening to Move the Ball. To see more about what I'm up to and how I can help you to move the ball, check out my website at www.jenniferagarrett.com. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And also join the Move the Ball Facebook group for even more content and to be a part of the Move the Ball movement.